Well, hello and God bless you and welcome to Mending Cracks in the Soul class, instruction, and practicum. And I think you made a good decision by coming to this. I don't know of anybody that doesn't need a little tune-up between the ears from now and then. But I've been really thankful to have championed this message and this cause for quite some time. Uh, I wrote a book on mending cracks in the soul well over 15 years ago and happened to be one of the people in the deliverance ministry that helped to pioneer this field. And I'm very thankful to be able to present this to you in video form today. We have it in book form and everything else. But if I'm not a better man today than I was 15 years ago, then I'm in bad shape. And I know more now than I knew 15 years ago. And I can teach this better now than I could teach it 15 years ago. And I'm excited to be presenting it new and afresh on video, Eva, so that you can enjoy this. Uh, mending cracks in the soul is an interesting phrase, isn't it? And I immediately am drawn to the word soul, but I'm also thinking about mending cracks. We're talking about what mending cracks in the soul is. It's, it's memory healing in one regard. It's how the Holy Spirit works to help us deal with the issues of our past. It's also what's called inner healing because we have issues in our minds that need to be healed in certain areas. Not always, if, if you have a crack in one area of your mind, doesn't mean that you're completely an invalid. Uh, as I've been happy to say recently, I might be an invalid, but I'm not invalid. <laughs> but anyway, you're not an invalid in your mind because you have a crack there. And this is what this class, this instruction is about, is identifying the cracks in our soul, how to fix them, and how to keep them fixed. If you had a crack in your teapot, or a crack in your manifold in your car, then you need to get the crack fixed because cracks is where the issues leak out of. The vacuum pressure in your car or the tea in the teapot. And the same thing's true with our minds. When we have cracks in our soul, faith leaks out. And we continue to put faith in it and it leaks out and we don't understand why that we can't build a reservoir of faith and it's because there's a crack in our soul. And we want to learn all about these. A number of years ago, I first heard about memory healing or a ministry of the Holy Spirit to heal cracks in the mind. I was dubious, skeptical of the matter. And I'll never forget, I was collecting um, Osage orange thorns to make crowns of thorns. Uh, that I did one year for holiday gifts. And I spoke to the Lord and I said, and I was, I was just cogitating, ruminating over this, was is there really a function of the Holy Spirit to go into our past? I mean, I had seen that he could show us the future, but I had never considered knowing the past. And I thought, well, how did Moses write the book of Genesis if God couldn't take him backwards? And how did Luke write the book of Acts if God didn't take him backwards. And I said to the Lord, I said, I don't want to, as a teacher in the body of Christ, I don't want to be majoring in the minors. And I also don't want to be minoring in the majors. And if this is a major deal, how about you showing this to me in the Bible? I mean, he's my master, right? So, I mean, and I said, I'd prefer to not have it in some minuscule place like the book of Colossians. <laughs> or, you know, the book of Hesitations. I meant to say Galatians. Galatians or Hesitations. My favorite two books of the Bible. And so he spoke to me in such a clear, audible way. And he said to me, he said, well, is Luke 4, 18 good enough for you? And it slammed me, and, and I've done my Bible memory verses, and I know that Luke 4.18 is Jesus Christ's ordination prophecy that was quoted out of Isaiah chapter 61, and where 
it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And this is what we're talking about relative to biblical evidence of this existing. Because look, I've been involved in charismania for a long time. You know, I've seen everything from gold teeth to gold fillings to angel feathers to, you know, and who knows about extra biblical manifestations. That's not my job to judge them. I, I'm a fruit inspector, not a judge. But when it comes to this subject of memory healing, uh, I want to make sure that I am in the Bible and on firm footing before I begin introducing anything like this to the body of Christ. If you didn't know this, one of the reasons it shut down the Azusa Street Revival in the early 1900s was they brought a hypnotist in and was showing people how to hypnotize others and was doing it under the guise of the Holy Spirit. It led to a bunch of intercessors to pray to shut it down. And so there is a responsibility of being a teacher in the body of Christ. And James chapter 3 verse 1 says, Be not many teachers, knowing that you shall receive the greater judgment or damnation. But majoring in the majors. And so when we go to Luke 4 verse 18, it says that Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, and he came to preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance to the captives. Now that doesn't mean you only preach when people are in jail. And when people are captured, this means they need to be delivered. And they're captured many times by their past. And the Bible tells us that we're to reckon the old man dead and to live in the new man. That old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But then some of us sometimes have issues that continue to erupt and emerge from our past. And this is why we're doing this, to deal with this. And we're looking at the biblical evidence, and then we're going to see how these cracks are fixed. But we're seeing here that they are fixable. The recovering of sight to the blind, I have a whole section in our class talking about this. It's not talking about healing blind people physically because it's recovering of the sight to the blind. I'll tell you more about it later. But I'm just letting you know that this is a major truth in a major place. And to set at liberty those who are bruised or crushed or will see, the root word means traumatized as we study this. And Jesus wants those people to set, be set at liberty. Remember, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him to do this. Well, now he is manifested through and in us. And so when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you are here to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those that are bruised and crushed. I wonder how many people sit in a church meeting and are just absolutely miserable in their mind. And how many of them actually hate themselves or don't like themselves or judge themselves so severely and so critically. And the reason for this is what we're dealing with. And Jesus came to the world to heal this. And I'd like to tell you that the ministry of Jesus is very much alive today because of the omniscient plan of God that he sent his son into the world and that him dying and being raised from the dead and sending the Holy Spirit replicated him in power. And had the princes of this world known this, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. So first of all, let's get the cracks healed in your soul. Or let's get the crack healed in your teapot, okay? But then this is the same process, same principles that will help others in the same way. Now, to heal the brokenhearted, I want to tell you what happened to me just recently. I recorded this class two and a half years ago 
with Break the Gray Ministries and the Sunflower Ministries in Michigan. And we were very, very excited about it. They have some of the greatest interns and they're praying for us this weekend as we're filming this and new. And we really got the filming stolen from us. It really was a theft. And it just bothered me badly for two and a half years. And not that I had it stolen from me, but that the people that needed to be delivered were not going to receive this. And there's, I have no idea how many thousands of people that will see this who break the gray ministry, and we bless them in Jesus' name. But I'm this way, okay? It's not, it's not a smart thing for the devil to make me mad. And when he does, he pays. And I've got a vendetta that I'm settling against him now for several things. And I know that vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord, but he works within me to repay. And he stole the word of God from us for two and a half years. And so I said, well, if you're going to do that, I'm bringing it back in spades. I'm going to make this, it's going to be better than ever before. And it is better than ever before. And I've learned something in the past two and a half years that has deeply impacted my life and will deeply impact yours in how we present this material. And yes, the Holy Spirit has a function to find the corrupted files of your mind where you've been injured. That's true. And my presentation of this in the book even, but I got a greater insight and revelation today than I did then. And that is that yes, the Holy Spirit leads you in this, but Jesus Christ is your physician. And He is the shepherd and bishop of your soul. And He is your personal leader, shepherd and bishop to lead you through this. Because the subject of memory healing, listen to me here for a second, okay? This is a very, very important subject. Okay? And the world is very interested in it, aren't they? Yes. But what are their solutions? Their solutions are what? Hypnosis? Or psychotropic drugs? Or then therapy and counseling, which is then followed by drugs? And or whatever. <laughs> Frontal lobotomy. <laughs> Joe always wants me to tell the joke that I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. And I'd rather have my cracks mended in my soul than have the crack widen into a, a huge crevice that can't be fixed. And when cracks widen into crevices, it's because demons get in and part them to the end that people have a very difficult time reconciling the pieces that have been left after demons have shattered. Let's nip it in the bud, right? But we're gonna talk about the world's remedies in this and what ours is. The Holy Spirit has a, fun a, a function to find the dysfunction. John 14, 26 tells us that it calls things to our remembrance. But the comforter is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. So John 14, 26. You know, Romans 8, 27 says that the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, searches our hearts. Wow. How about having Jesus for a librarian? To go through the files of your mind to make sure that none of your files are corrupted personal touch of the master. This is where I'm going with this. You see, because I said this to my good friend last night, talking on the telephone. He said, Dale, please say that publicly. And he said, you just said so much that summarizes. And let me say this to you. God the Father, I love him, but I just, I can't, I don't get him. He's too big. I mean, every time I try to see him, he burns my eyeballs. You know, I mean, and he's just, he's so glorious. And when I go into his presence, I have to crawl under the rug. And I'm just saying this because I want to be real honest with you. And the Holy Spirit, I get it. I know the Holy Spirit is a he because the Bible says he's a he. 
And yet I know the Holy Spirit does not testify of himself. He testifies of Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. So with the Father, it pleased the Father that in the Son all his fullness would dwell. Huh. And the Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of you out here that's a lot smarter than me. But I've never found anybody that understood the Trinity. And maybe you're, maybe you're the fair-haired child that's got this thing figured out with the, you know, the water, ice, and steam, and chitting the egg. And Hey, I'm talking practical here. Go boil your water if you want to. But what I'm saying here is if you keep your eyes focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the real reason that you got saved is to have him in your life. I was severely, extremely persecuted for teaching on this at one time. A fellowship with Jesus Christ. And the Bible says truly, 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And what I want to do is teach you these principles, not just a process, but these principles whereby He can personally lead you in this healing. And here as before, uh, I just said, well, the Holy Spirit will do it. Well, let me tell you something. I've learned since then that Jesus is the shepherd and bishop of our souls. He's the physician, and He's Dr. Jesus, and He's the one that personally will lead you through this. The reason I say this is because there are charlatans in the world that are operating some of these principles. For example, we want to get over this. And to get over this, not only do you have to have the crack fixed, but you need to get a new image in your mind. And new age people are teaching this. But they got it out of Romans chapter 12, verse 2 to be transformed and to get a new picture. And there, there are new age people that are teaching this. And there, there are believer, Christian believers that are teaching this. And I thank God, you know, where Christ is preached even in pretense. And I'm not trying to make a case that what I'm presenting is better than anyone else's presentation. I'm simply trying to present a case that the Lord Jesus Christ himself as he's been replicated through the Holy Spirit in you, will personally lead you in this ministry. And I've shown you in the Bible already, it says that he came from heaven to earth to show the way. Right? To heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Hey, have you been captured in your mind? Are you dysfunctional because of fear? Maybe there's a short fuse in your stick of dynamite called anger. And the only difference between anger and danger is one letter, duh. Okay? Or maybe you've been captured by lust and you numb the pain of your past in a pill or in a bottle. Huh. And yet, there's the denial aspect of this too. Well, I don't have any problems. And yet, if you ask that to your wife, she'd say, <laughs> oh, really? Or your husband, and he'd go, oh. Oh, no, dear. You don't. <laughs> no. But the honesty of the Holy Spirit is what searches our hearts. Trust me, I certainly am not trying to create anything that doesn't exist. I'm not trying to input thoughts into your mind. I'm trying to help you get rid of the ones in there that you don't want or show you how to manage them. Look, all of us have been victimized in our lives. And we get cracks in our soul when we get victimized. Usually it happens when we're children. And then the devil reads the fine print in the contract and goes back and tries to enforce an incident on you that happened before you were saved. And we sit here and wonder, how in the world can that happen? 
because we are sealed by the blood of the Lamb. We are spirit and soul and body. And the devil is an opportunist. He reads the fine print. Recently, he found an opening in the window of my body and attacked me in my body. I would have sworn there is no way that split foot lying sucker could get to me. But he read the fine print and got to me through my body. And he's a specialist in this. And what he does is he goes into your past before you're in covenant with God and pulls something out of your files that's illegal for him to use once you've been put under the blood and then convinces you that he has a legal right to do it. Hmm. Well, first of all, we should know that we're spirit and soul and body and that we as spirit beings can control our minds. Now, if you cannot control your mind, this is why he said to preach deliverance to the captives. And there is deliverance for you. One of our major responsibilities as spirit beings is to control our thoughts. To live at the crescendo of the fruit of the Spirit with temperance. Against such there's no law against temperance. And we're to be masters of our own tabernacle. But I'm telling you, I've dealt with demons for many years. I got into this field because I was teaching exercising spiritual authority. I was casting demons out of people having fantastic results until I got to places where people had doorstops in their minds and I couldn't get the demons out of their minds and I wanted to know why. You know what, it's amazing how much you can learn when you admit that you don't know it. Or how much help you can get when you admit you need it. And I needed the help. People come to me crying out to me in pain. How do I get delivered? I've got issues with people now that I'm crying out before God that need to be solved. But I've got some answers today. And that is there's hope for you in Jesus Christ. He is not just an icon hanging on a tree in a Catholic church. He is a risen Savior ascended and come again in the presence of the Holy Spirit as Jesus the healer to heal your broken hearts. So I want to talk to you more about principles than a process, but I'd really like to talk to you more about the principle than principles, if you get my spelling. But he's the shepherd and bishop of our soul. And he's the one that finds the broken heart finds and binds it up and heals us and leads us in this process. <laughs> Luke 4, 18 says to heal the brokenhearted. The word heal is the Greek word iomai, but it means to cure. You know, I'm, a, I'm an official graduate of truck tire repair school, and I know how to patch a truck tire. And when you put that there glue on that there truck tire, you got to allow it a little bit of time to cure. When this says to cure the brokenhearted, there is a process of time to allow this to heal. That's why it needs to be bound up so that no infection gets in it. That's why it needs to be bathed in the oil of God's love and word. But I'm telling you, you're in a good place. And if you've suffered with dysfunctions in your mind or questions about why do I react the way I react in certain ways in certain situations, you are not the odd duck. You're just a duck. Just like the rest of us that are quacked up, right? 
We all waddle. I mean, you know, we all quack, right? We all have issues in our lives. But the ones that are humble enough to admit it will be the ones that will get over this and get on the other side of it. Jesus called you to be functional and not dysfunctional. Remember, here, okay? You got biblical evidence that this is real. And we're looking at the fact that Jesus Christ himself, Christ Jesus himself, leads us through this ministry through the power of the Holy Spirit. The blood that Jesus shed out of his brow when he sweat droplets of blood, nobody touched him for that bleeding. No one beat him. It all came from the inside mental duress and pressure and stress of the worry of dying, or maybe the worry of not fulfilling yours and my redemption. Maybe that's the pressure that was ca that caused him to sweat droplets of blood. No one touched him. He sweat droplets of blood because of the mental anguish that he had. Huh. While I was studying mending cracks in the soul, I had a parallel study going on in the subject of perfect redemption, the seven ways that Jesus bled. One of the ways he bled was he bled out of his brow. Hemotidrosis is the terminology. He actually sweat blood because of his mental problems. He shed that blood for you to be healed of your past dysfunctions and so that you could be mentally a giant for him in the kingdom. Amen. No reason for any dysfunction in the past to control us, but just remember, he is the shepherd and bishop of our soul. He is the one that leads us in this ministry, and he is the one that will personally usher you in this. We're going to have a great ministry here, but even more so, he goes home with you, and we're going to prepare you to be ready for this ministry anytime. He chooses to use it and sees that you need it to have the cracks in your soul mended. That's what this is about. Mending cracks in the soul, healing the brokenhearted, inner healing, deliverance. We want to get over it and get on with being like Jesus.